Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I have something very, very interesting. It's the rasp pad, as some people affectionately call it, the pie pad. In other words, it turns your Raspberry Pi into a 10 inch tablet. So here it is in all its glory. This is the rasp pad. It's a different kind of device. It's a 10.1 inch display with a Raspberry Pi mounted directly in the back. And so uh, this is a touchscreen. And it has, uh, I'm running on regular Raspbian OS, and so it is, uh, it has some tiny touch points, and you might want to consider using a touch friendly OS with it. I also generally use it with a keyboard and mouse. Uh, I'm using a full size one here, but I have portable ones that typically get used with it. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting device because it's not exactly a tablet, not exactly a laptop. So it kind of crosses the bounds. But let me give you the tour of the device. On the side, you have your uh, four USB ports that are part of the Pi. And then you also have the Ethernet port. And so because of this, they made a design decision that some people like and some people don't. Actually, I don't know that anybody actually likes it, but some people tolerate and some people don't. It uh, has a touchscreen USB thing plugged right in the side of it, which is taking up one of your USB ports, and that's kind of an issue to some people, but then beyond that, it is sticking out the side at all times. So that's a little bit interesting. Uh, some people can deal with it, some people hate it. Uh, moving around the back, you have two speakers, and you have access to your GPIO here, which I'll show you when we get to the actual bottom of the unit. On the right side, we have the power input jack, which is a 15 volt 1.5 amp uh, unit and so that's where it gets its power to charge the battery or to run without the battery uh, micro USB over here headphone out full-size HDMI we have a volume rocker here and the power button now the power button is kind of interesting because you actually push and hold the power button to turn the LCD on and off and then tap the power button to turn the Pi on and off. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of getting used to that. And then on the front we have our power LED as well as our battery charging LED. On the back we have the cover for the Pi itself, which is just sitting in here at the moment. And you'll see it has a full size HDMI connector and micro USB. Now this is a Pi 3B plus. I considered uh, trying to adapt this thing to put a four in there, but uh, because this is micro USB and this is full size HDMI, I would have had to use adapters, which that wouldn't actually be that big of a problem, except I was a little concerned with the amount of power that a, uh, that a Pi 4 draws. So rather than, rather than chance it, I just decided to go stock with the 3B plus and use that. So, you might hear a little hesitation in my voice, and the reason for that is because this is a very niche device. It is not a tablet. Uh, it's going to get about four hours of battery life, and the operating system, at least, that used by default is not super touch-friendly. It's also not a laptop. It doesn't have a built-in keyboard and mouse. So, it's one of those things where if you want to do just straight-up media consumption, get a tablet. If you want to do content creation or get normal work done, get a cheap Linux laptop. This is a different use case altogether. So this is probably best suited for, I would say, people who actually need a Raspberry Pi on the go. And I know that sounds kind of revolutionary, but I think a lot of people who buy this are picturing it more as a laptop or more as a tablet, and it's not really either one. This is what I would consider a high-end Raspberry Pi touchscreen more than a tablet or computer. And so you have to think about this as something where like, let's say I need the actual GPIO on the road. Let's say I do some kind of prototyping, I need to test out some sensors or something like that. Um, that's where this would come in handy. This is a portable Raspberry Pi screen more than a tablet. So you're a STEM teacher and you want to be able to interact with some sensors and things like that and show how a Raspberry Pi works. This is nice because you pick it up and you go, you run a ribbon cable out here, you have your GPIO. Um, but as far as a lot of the things that I think other people may use them for, they may wind up being disappointed. The other thing it is, it's $185 right now on Amazon and so it's not cheap. If you're willing to spend that kind of money, it's kind of cool to use as a, uh, as like a screen for your Raspberry Pi server, but it's an expensive screen. 
And so this thing, I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm not telling you not to buy it. I'm just letting you know that this is out there. And that is the cool thing. I love that this is out there. I love that Sun Founder went out there and made this thing, that they took a chance on it, that it shipped, that people have been able to get them in their hands. And I'm sure there are people using these things for all kinds of cool uses around the world. And speaking of around the world, this one is going to Alaska. I've got some friends up there who are doing... Uh, a lot with putting sensors in buildings. And if you've never lived in a cold area like that, a building that freezes can cost you thousands of dollars, even tens of thousands of dollars if you don't know it. And so what they're doing is they're doing some preventative things, putting uh, DS18B20 sensors and flow meters and things like that all around the property. And something like this is very cool for doing some diagnostics, doing some programming, stuff like that. So this one is going to my friends up in Alaska. So that is the RASPAD. Let me know what you think. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.